All right, so I decided to make a TLS video again from the last time, which was, I believe, August of last year. So it's been a really long time since I made a TLS video, but I got really into Mario Luigi again. So after playing a bunch of the games recently and just talking about them in my most recent videos in the past few weeks, I decided to make a tier list. As you can already see, I have all seven games. We will be including the remakes because uh, even though it's obvious that the remakes are going to be better than the original, I think it's um, important to see how much they stack when compared to the other games uh, in the series. So I think it's a pretty good comparison. I did in a previous vi uh, video bash on Partisan Time a little bit, but I promise it's not that bad of a game, even though I def it was definitely an interesting video to really go over with. But yeah, so as you can probably already tell to start off with, uh, I don't have a C tier at all because I don't believe that there is a C tier within these games. There's a very obvious bad game and then everything else is just good but could be better or just a really, really good, brilliant game. Amazing, super fun. Everyone should buy it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we should just go in with the elephant in the room. Uh, where is it? Paper Jam. That's a very easy F tier. Not a very good game. Uh, if any of you have played that, it is a buggy mess. And the game, even though it's a Paper in not a Paper Mario game, it, even though it's a Mario and Luigi game, uh, it brings in a lot of the Paper Mario elements that it had um, from, uh, I think it was, I even forgot the name of the one Paper Mario game I hate. I think it was Sticker Star. There we go. Superstar. It brings a lot of stuff uh, from that game uh, and how it functions, and it it's really problematic, in my opinion, since uh, Superstar is not a good game, very much so. And I know a lot of people will defend it, but it, it really does a lot of things that isn't Paper Mario or really Mario esque, and it kind of brings in a lot of really boring elements to a game uh, that was already really good, and it kind of just ruins it. And they pretty much did the same thing with Mario and Luigi. So the entire idea of collecting toads is really, really tedious and really annoying throughout the game. Uh, they pretty much, from how I've understood it, they tried to get the thing from Bowser and Say Story where you get the little blo block cats, kind of. I forgot. Uh, they call them blitties or kitties, something like that. Uh, they tried to bring that element back into Paper Jam, uh, but it doesn't really work. It, uh, it's very tedious, I guess, the way that it's done. And the way that, I guess, Bowser's Inside Story did it was just way more interesting, way more fun, and it was more incentivizing as well than it was in Paper Jam. I'm not saying Paper Jam is, like, a terrible game. It's that this game needed more development time and needed, I would say, like, better planning. And honestly, this is... Besides um, the remake for Bowser's Inside Story, this game pretty much sealed the deal for Alpha Dream and just kind of... Just sent Alpha Dream into like a spiral of just bankruptcy and loss. So yeah, that's that's Paper Jam. Now, B tier. Uh Partners in Time. This game was this game was good. Really good. A lot of fun. Really, really enjoyable. Honestly, um uh, the biggest problem with this game, uh which I talked about in my other video where I talked about it, was the fact that the battle mechanics, the, especially the special moves, just don't work. They're really, how do I put this, boring and just, uh, it really kills the fun from the game. Uh, I guess the best way to describe it is that uh, it, it involves a lot less strategy than previous installments like, um, like uh, Superstar Saga. There we go. Because uh, in Superstar Saga, there was the bro moves, and you need pro points. That's the currency that you need to use this move. Very simple, very easy to understand. Paper Jam, um, <clears throat> not Paper Jam, Partners in Time doesn't do this. You, you have the special moves as items, and now your entire strategy is, let me get these red hot uh, chili peppers that pretty much increase my attack, and now I'll just attack the boss with every special move that I think will do a ton of damage, which is essentially going to be the trampoline, um, that big super fire one that like, it's like a giant fireball in the sky and you got to keep it up and down to maximize damage. And there is the copy flower. 
it, past those three, everything else is kind of like whatever. There's also the Fire Flower and Ice Flower, which are not bad if it's like if it's something that requires multi hits. But the big Fire Flower one that you get that you get at the end of the game is so much better. And once you've got like a ton of those, you have no reason to use anything else pretty much. So yeah, the game is a mess uh, mechanically. But past that, the game is great. It's a great story, really fun, uh, really interesting characters. A uh, really interesting like world that they uh, really built, but yeah, that's as good as it gets. All right, now this one I don't think is much of a surprise. Superstar Saga, and I'm gonna put this in B tier, not because the game is bad. Uh, it's it's really phenomenal. It's a really good game, but the original Superstar Saga had a few problems um, that I felt that uh, were more addressed in the remake. So. A lot of that pretty much comes down to just the uh, player movement as well as just a few balancing things. I know uh, some things were adjusted in the remake. Uh, certain enemies were easier, certain enemies were harder, uh, if I remember correctly. And certain items were a little easier to get. Some were a bit more difficult, if I remember. Uh, but overall, the, there was a more of a game balance in the newer Superstar Saga than it was in the previous. And the previous original version of Superstar Saga, it was, there was more of a difficulty, but there was more cheese involved. It, it's, essentially the game is really unbalanced. It's fun, it's just unbalanced. And that's pretty much where a lot of my problems come with the game. Um, also the fact that some mechanics aren't really explained very well in the game. Like they kind of explain it, but um, so what Superstar Saga does for bro moves is that you'll learn these things, uh, these moves where the classic Mario Luigi moves are like you can like get Mario Luigi stack on top of each other and spin them. Uh, they can get like super tall and they can jump onto like higher places. They have that, um, but they they that translates into bro moves. All right. The problem is that these bro moves have an extra form. So essentially, you have eight bro moves, not like four or five or whatever it was, whatever the number is. And they don't tell you that you have those. They just magically appear and they don't really explain how you get those. In the new one, it's more, there's better tutorials and a lot more things are explained and a lot more things are balanced. And that's the only reason why Superstar Saga is in B tier. It's a great game. It's great, I guess, trilogy to the entire Fawful uh, Antagonist Saga. But um, it's just really unbalanced and that's my problem with it. And so that leads me to A tier. Yes, that is Dream Team, not Superstar Saga, the remake. Reason being, Dream Team just, um, it was the first, th I guess I'm going to call it the first 3D uh, Mario Luigi game. It wasn't really like uh, pixelated. It was like more like, there were like actual models, I guess. Um, it, I don't want to say they're actual models. It was just more that uh, they're very obviously not pixels on a screen. Uh, like flat drawn pixels is kind of what I meant by that. And I would say that they tried to emulate Bowser's Inside Story. And it did that pretty well. The entire Dream Team concept was super interesting. The entire idea that now Mario's by himself, he has to do everything. He kind of gave you the eye feeling of, um, hey, I, I'm Bowser, but I'm actually Mario. It's it's cool. It's really interesting. They really tried to stay with the entire Bowser's Inside Story aesthetic where like, you are the the main character. You are like you're a one man army, and then like in the outside world, you're like it's two of us now. Woo, that's so cool, right? Uh, they do that pretty well. It's just they try to do Bowser Inside Story, and they don't exactly end up being Bowser Inside Story. Um, I think a lot of that comes from the fact that I feel like um, Antasma isn't a very interesting antagonist. To be honest, he's kind of boring, I would say. Fawful is a significantly more interesting uh, antagonist. They really built him up over the course of like three games and like you see how like how he's developed over those games. So you see Fawful, how he's a lackey in the first one. Then the second one, he's pretty much an underground dark web drug dealer pretty much. Um, arms dealer, I would say. He's probably closer to what he actually is. And then in Bowser's Side Story, he's a full-on antagonist. He essentially is the reason why the game like happens. He is such an interesting character. And Tasma really isn't. 
and that kind of brings down the game a bit more again dream team is a fantastic game i really do really do like that game love it it's just it tries too hard to be Bowser's side story when it knows very well it isn't and it can't be that and that's essentially my problem with it and now i've already talked about superstar saga um the remake it's just a more balanced superstar saga um version i think it's a little bit better than dream team it kind of takes what dream team was and just uh transfers that into superstar saga uh it, it might be just because i'm biased and i just really 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 like superstar saga i think it's a very interesting game really fun i've played that game multiple times again that could be my bias but uh yeah honestly i'd argue these two are like on the same level so like these two are like interchangeable so there's nothing like i guess an a tier it's not that Dream Team is worse than Superstar Saga. It's that, like, they're pretty much the same. I, I just like Superstar Saga more, to be honest, because I grew up that game. I loved it. I, I can't really turn my back on it, you know? Now, finally, Bowser's Inside Story. Now, this game, this should be very obvious. The remake is obviously going to be better. That is without a question. These are both S-tier games. Phenomenal games. Very interesting. Uh, so, I mean, I think most people have seen Bowser's Side Story. Uh, you get to play Mario and Luigi, you also get to play as Bowser. You also got Starlo, which is by far, I think, is the best, um, I guess, side menu character uh, that they've introduced in the game, and like in the Mario and Luigi games. Uh, very interesting character, I would say. Uh, especially from how they've developed Starlo and just throughout that entire game. I know that Starlo does appear in later games. I believe Dream Team. Um, no, not Dream Team. Paper Jam. Paper Jam, he appears. Uh, Starlo appears. But Starlo, Starlo does not save that game easily. But uh, yeah. Uh, Bowser's Inside Story. Again, really fun game. It does everything a Mario Luigi game needs to do. Um, really interesting story, uh, develops the antagonist really well, uh, the, there's this one boss fight that you get, like, you fight this one guy three times, literally, you fight him three times, and every single time, he is really, really, really interesting, like, there's, it doesn't feel like one fight is the same, pretty much, and they, like, even though it's the same character, they nail that, every single boss fight, they nail it very well. And it's no different in the uh, remake. Essentially, all the remake does is like, here's Bowser's Inside Story. Again, uh, newer graphics, some adjusted balance stuff. I know they adjust the uh, final boss. I think they made the final boss harder, I believe. Uh, or they made him easier, I don't know. Uh, they remade music. Essentially, it's a more modernized version of Mario and Luigi. Um, it, as well as like some side story stuff. It's... I don't think I need to say anything about Bowser's Inside Story. Anyone who's played that game understands that Bowser's Inside Story is definitively the best Mario Luigi game there is. That is not a question. If you have not played the game, you could very easily pick up the DS version for like cheap on eBay or something. Or if you already have it and you just want to play it again, go for it. It is such an amazing RPG. Very rewarding, very fun to play, and it's, it's honestly pretty addicting. Now, of course, I'm not going to talk to the business on just how stupid of an idea it was for them to remake Bowser's Night Story, because that game did not need a remake. It was cool if they did, but that was not going to sell anymore, especially because Bowser's Inside Story released uh, a year after the Switch, and I don't think anybody cared about the 3DS after the Switch released. So pretty much, releasing that on the 3DS was by far the dumbest idea from Alpha Dream. That should have been a Switch game, I would argue. Um... I don't know how you make that a Switch game, to be honest, but um, maybe they scrapped Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story remake and just made something else, a, new, like a sixth Mario and Luigi game, would have been so much better. They would have not filed for bankruptcy, I think. Uh, the game would have sold significantly more um, than the 0 0.36, I think it was, that they sold. Um, I mean, I'm no business expert, but I'm pretty confident that they would not have had to file for bankruptcy if... Uh, if that was a Switch game instead of a 3DS game. Bad business decision, they didn't know, it's whatever. Things happen. Here's hoping that we get a, I mean, this is 7, but um, I would say a 6th mainline series uh, Mario Luigi game. Something after Paper Jam, nothing like the remakes. So yeah, uh, a bit of a longer video. 
Um, I definitely went on a rant for a few of these uh, games, but it's whatever. Uh, I really love the Mario Luigi series. Really good series. Just not Paper Jam. That game is just not good. It really is not. It takes too much from Paper Mario. The newer Paper Marios and pretty much destroys the only good parts of Mario Luigi. And yeah, that is the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've done a tier list video. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, you know, tell me in the comments below what you like, what you maybe disliked. Tell me that so I can like maybe fix that up in a future video. Uh, again, if you did like the video, hit the like subscribe button. I appreciate it. Uh, I try to make videos as often as possible, usually like once a week uh, at the very least. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I will see you all next one. Bye.